this video is called You Didn't Finish the Game. And it relates to the concept of reviewing video games without oh having goodness. finished them. Oh, this ought to be good. Mm. Yes. Oh, I mean, this shouldn't be straight, pretty straightforward, I think. I've given it a watch through, and I've got all timestamps for the discussion parts. The, it, this is a <laughs> stealing video, so you can end up with a lot of crazy shit in it. And I've, uh, I've made sure to cut around so that we can just talk about the main points being brought up. Because isn't that the fun of the, uh, the, the whole thing? There's even another video that I've got as a potential that's called You Didn't Need to Finish the Game. So oh my goodness! Oh, it's just yeah. This is this is a topic that's How come do you up even in argue that? gaming. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's mm -hmm. finish the fucking to... game, you bums. Like I just what are they? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Listen, if it's you know, it depends on the game, right? Some it games depends on the game. Some depends games on what you're really doing long. as well. And some games completing on... them means different things, you know. Yeah, like mm. completing an MMO or well, we'll see if that any of that comes up. Maybe maybe we're wasting our. Oh, time. and then it's worth well, remembering the total, total biscuits format of uh, doing uh, video game coverage was first impressions, but mm -hmm. very WTF deliberately yeah. labeled sure let and know presented that as such. Exactly. Yeah, as long as it's clear. Yeah, I think that's the important part. Um, obviously, we could we could give our takes on all this, but we may as well use the video to sort of introduce them, I guess. And that means we're starting around here. Here we go. Ah, oh, my ah, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's, a, it's what an aesthetic. aesthetic. <laughs> it's an aesthetic. Are we skipping the video essay as preamble? Yes. Uh, this, this is only a minute long, this part that I skip again because well, this introduces the idea of the video and then we get to the discussion of the video. There's a portion <laughs> where uh, like dumbass comments are read and it's just like we don't need to do, do the that. thing. Like we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah. you know what? No shade to anyone who does it. I'm just saying we got lots of videos to cover, okay? Well, and I if think... your intro was good, we might give a shit about it. But all of Jim, Stephanie, Sterling, Quisition's intros are terrible and they're cringe and they're never funny. So why bother? This crazy idea that people say stupid things on the internet. Unbelievable. Unheard of. And they leave them in YouTube comments as well. Who well, if you have what could be considered mm -hmm. a controversial perspective and then you go, right, time to defend my position. Okay. And then you start talking about the stupidest, craziest people like you yeah. should do it or aliens will abduct you. It's like, you know, what? this isn't even Ooh. this doesn't even make sense. Yes, <laughs> this is just oh. video games. There's no aliens involved. What's happening? I just uh, I, I take issue. I enjoy aliens. I'm just staring at this hat. Nothing wrong with <laughs> Myla Mouse. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I wore it better. <laughs> Wait, when did you have a top hat? Um, it was on my thumbnail for my Jim Sterling response last oh, year. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Omega Ridley did it. It was really good. You gonna bring I it back at some point? It. Absolutely, definitely, yeah, yes, one hundred percent, every time. Well then, let us see this introduction of the top like letters. Video game I... reviewer today. Yeah. Well, some of you may have seen this episode coming. We will, of course, be touching uh, on my. Which, by the way, if you're going to do like the say... CRT, the CRT like monitor effect, you need to have the lines moving. Like if it's static, it just looks weird. Yeah. Well, Terrible. that's you where you're. That? That's where you're wrong, Fringy. That's a common misconception. Whenever you would buy a CRT monitor back in the day, it had this like film over the over the screen that had those lines on it. So you had right, to make sure was, that when you brought it home, you had to peel it off. That's right. Yeah, you had to, you had to peel off that out. film right. so that the lines would go away. It's like yeah. when you, you get a new phone. you got to peel off the CRT <laughs> fake display thing. They always <laughs> exactly. pop out the phones, dab them. Dab like, them. seriously, it has to move. This just looks That stupid. is part of what it does. That's the whole point, <laughs> is that they move. The spice-inviting review for The Legend of Zelda, The Tears of the Majority. Oh my god. Indigo Gaming, welcome to the show. We're, uh, Hi, Indigo Gaming. Hi, Merce. Jump right into that, watch together, and you can join us. We're about to start the discussion of whether or not one must complete a game before reviewing it. That's a good discussion. <laughs> bom, bom, Thanks for inviting bom. me. Guys. No problemo. Jorah's Mask of the Link to the Kingdom of Time. Oh, that's all the names Today combined. I get it. That's really art. funny. I think that cut was to be like, yeah, you big mighty bow. Broke! Because that's the big the big thing, right? Equipment, damage, degradation. Big in mighty bows can break, mm -hmm. right? The Zelda right. games, people got upset about that. You see, that I was really lack. annoying in the first one. It was a bit, it was better in the in the uh, newer one. But still in the newer one? Still annoying. Still annoying. <laughs> Damn them. Documents, a particular flavor of rhetoric that turns up whenever 
a controversial review comes out and the fandom gets mad. Which it always does because the fan base is exhausting. You can leave whenever you want. <laughs> you <I know>. can <laughs> leave. <laughs> uh, um, why do they do this if they find it that like exhausting? I just don't get it. This is the thing. What do you have to say about this? Just like, well, I mean, yeah, that's, I don't know. It's just some. That's just what happens, I guess. I agree. I don't like. Fandoms, Welcome to the internet. Like, yeah, you don't have to go and fist fight them. Mm -hmm. But the, you could. That you could. Yeah. But not, yeah you know that if you were reviewing silent films back in the day, that there'd be a fan base who were like, "Hey, you fucking gave this an eight. This was a nine. Piece of shit. It's not it's exactly a big lingo. change, but um." <laughs> You know what? Fair enough. If they've been particularly angry this time, let's uh, maybe let's see what they've said. The topic I want to get off of my heaving, productive chest this week is the case heaving? of fandoms Why did you arguing say that? that a review if is you were in better shape, you wouldn't heave when you because spoke. the reviewer didn't finish the game. <gasps> An argument that <gasps> presents a real tactical own goal mm. if they actually got what they mm. claimed they wanted. All right, that's our hook. But the truth is, you don't want reviewers to finish games. What, because they would form a nice opinion of it? Um, is that <laughs> How do you the, <laughs> the longer I play the game, the worse my opinions get. <laughs> yeah, like, that's uh, unless you have like, unless you have two hundred hours in a game, I don't want to hear your review on it. Like that's like minimum for me personally, because there's so many things to Jesus explore. Jesus Christ! Wait, yeah, no, like, that's legit. Like a, even like a one hour game. Two hundred. Two <laughs> hundred. No, in, in terms of like a mechanic, like a mechanically heavy, a, a game that's heavy on mechanics, that's going to be important to me. I really want to know someone who's going to be completely thorough. But if but it's just a one hour game, wait, let's take thorough. let's take a normal game like Bioshock. How how many hours should you should you have in that? Before? Okay, okay, okay. What would you that's, say? Uh, mm, a couple hours with that, that wouldn't bother me. But something like um, a couple legal. Wait, you went from two hundred to legal. Yourself. Okay, oh compare God. that. To, compare that to something like League of Legends or Dead by Daylight. Something that's like really mechanically focused. I want to know that they've had an extensive amount of extensive amount of time in the game. But something that's a little bit more story based, then that's not gonna. Be, I'm gonna be have a little bit more leeway with that. Well, because I was gonna say with Bioshock, I probably want them to complete it, uh, preferably. Twice, yeah. depending on what kind of review they want to do. If they're just doing like, a, this is what I thought of it when I played it once, like, eh, whatever. That's almost like, that's almost like the premise for all of this. It's just label what you actually did at the beginning, and then tell me what you felt and thought. I guess so yeah, that we we know the scope. Loads of, there's loads of different things going on within this space we call reviewing. There's exhaustive analytic appraisals, yeah. and then there's just the sort of first impression, this is what I made of it, so recommendation, no recommendation, based on what you think of my taste and how it aligns with yours sort of thing. Yeah, this actually yeah. reminds me a lot of uh, this this talk that uh, Total Biscuit had way back in the day, and actually, uh, he, I think he, I actually asked him that question when I was at his panel like, way back when at DragonCon, and he was saying that he specifically kind of does his uh, he did his impressions videos like mid game to get his like kind of on the ground kind of expression of opinion as he was in the middle of the game but he did not frame those as reviews he would always call them impressions videos because he had not finished the game yet the yeah. series I, was called wtf is yeah 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 and there were always impressions videos and i think that it has some value but I think that a review definitely demands that you have a very thorough understanding of the game at least completed it once or and, and depending on game, the kind of game where it has like multiple paths, multiple classes, etc., you might actually have to play it twice or three times to get a full. Opinion. That's where, um, because it's like, where's the harm? Why are people angry? And it's like it's usually when you give a bad review and you weren't familiar with the mechanics, mm -hmm. or you yeah, got something wrong. That's where people get. I have upset. a yeah. I have a great example that uh, Tonal actually did a review. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was I he actually did a collab video with me a long time ago, um, before he blew mm -hmm. up, and and uh, he did a review. <laughs> <laughs> of the uh uh Friday the, thir the 13th game and I was steam friends with him at the time he did a review published a video on the game and he had 45 minutes of gameplay on that title <laughs> oh oh wow. that's a bit okay. low <laughs> yeah See, that's a little yeah. low <laughs> you're, you're not going to have an understanding of the mechanics or the bugs or, or, or like you know what actually is overpowered and the, the things that people actually want to know the 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 the, um, the proper information you're just going to have your your base impression and if they make that clear in the beginning that's fine but a lot of the people don't
the fairly yeah. frustrating truth of things is that mastery has a really strong correlation with uh, familiarity with mechanics. Yes, yeah. yes, that's where I got my crazy 200 number from. Yeah. I, should have refer- <laughs> I should have referenced League before I just threw out that number because that's so like, what would open-ended have, for video games. But... What would an analytic appraisal of, sorry for the sidetrack, but what would that even look like if you were to like, I'm going to review League of Legends? That's the problem oh. is League evolves every f- week, so yeah. 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 seasons. I, yeah. And it's if also you would, one you would... of the most complex games ever made. Yeah. So. I think the approach you'd have to take is going through um, showing a bronze match, silver match, all the way up to challenger and explaining the different like the, the different uh, criteria of improvement. That'd probably be the, the only way you can do it. Because like, how are you going to explain that to someone who's never played the oh, game? Oh man, even that would take forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's... And, then, and then you take into account <laughs> seasons and stuff like, like that. Like I, yeah. I, I, got, I got into Smite for a while and then I think season three came out and they completely re uh, changed the entire health, health regaining system and all oh that stuff. And I'd, yeah. I'd put about 200 hours in that game and I felt like a complete newbie again. It was crazy. You blink, you blink and then you don't even know what, what happened with these patch notes. You have to Absolutely. stay like, Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I played league like things. once or twice a year with some friendos who played all the time. Mm-hmm. And every time I log in, it's like, I don't know any of this. Yeah. this, this, yeah. this <laughs> I recognize the items. Like, you know the map. That's it. They don't change yeah. the map. But every oh, yeah. character I've played a lot of knows. Half the different. Has you none of these, changed. There's none of the skills anymore that I know. Yeah. yeah. Just pray, pray, the, yeah, pray they, they weren't reworked. Like, who knows? Like, they're probably reworked twice before yeah. they go back. This brings us to the real thing I'm wow. talking to. Wow, let's call You know, I just... Oh, no. I just oh, Ring. <laughs> Yay, Lord of Ring. People at home can't fun. see it, but I just skipped, like... I was going to say, there's no way you just... <laughs> I skipped a lot. I hate yeah. video essays. It's 19 minutes. <laughs> you skipped 10 minutes. minutes? <laughs> no, more than 10 minutes. 19 more minutes? 10 minutes? We're 19 minutes into the video now? We have... We oh, have 19, won- oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. All of that was incoherent rambling from the profession. By the way, well, I, do, I do love the Gollum inspires like a sense of endearing. Like everyone's just like, oh, there he is. Look at him go. Yeah, <laughs> look at him go. Yeah, go Gollum, good time go with that. Gollum, go. Yeah. Um, how? So much you could say. It wasn't his fault. The game he only shit. manages like 10 minutes on it. Apparently, because uh, like this is the thing I checked through and I was I was like, this was the part I found interesting. So maybe it's just me, but right. You know, don't want to spend 10 years on on a video all about Gollum, possibly <laughs> on Zelda. I'm not here to defend the concept that reviewers don't have to finish games. No, Um, I'm here to point out the tactical stupidity of Mm. using that concept to defend a video game. That seems like a misguided approach. Point of view. Well, obviously, I imagine the same for you, but it's like, wait, what's what is going to be the argument? There is. Why why wouldn't you talk about the principled position of whether you need to complete a game to do a review of a game? Why would you go? Yeah, are you ethically responsible? Yeah, just brush it off instantly. Instead, it's like, no, you don't want that, okay? Well, it's just <laughs> really, I'll, I'll, I'll super tell straightforward you argument. Want. You don't play the game enough, you get things wrong, and then the game's reputation suffers. Is that, did you do something wrong, or should that be okay? Should that just be fine? I think I'll it's you know, on both positions. I think it's fine for you to have the position that that is a fine thing to do and the human error should be expected sort of thing, but I also think it's fine to be like, yeah, yeah you should avoid that at all costs and we should condemn it when we find it. That's what I think. But, you know, that discussion doesn't get had. We have a different one in this video. Also, hi, John! Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know who so, you have or have not met here, so everyone just shout hi. Hi! 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 hi. There we hi. go, we did it. Everyone's met each no. other. Uh, Alright, we've all met. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that right. fun? Big mean reviewer what didn't like it. You didn't even finish the game! Is often screamed through a veil of assumption it's by gamers really furious that a product they're hyped for got a score I mean, you can't be this incredulous when a lot of reviewers yeah. do not finish the game. And you can tell. Yeah. If you are a game reviewer, then asking them to finish the game generally is not, it's not unreasonable. And it's really. like, can you review the, can you use the product before you review it? You know. Loaded with assumptions, it's, I'd say, well, it's loaded with one big one, which is true, right? Which is you didn't complete it. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. the ones that follow through from that is... The, the less you play, like, the more you play, the more information you're going to gain about the game, the more comprehensive your understanding is going to be. That's pretty intuitively... Mm-hmm. That just makes and a lot of sense. Yeah. Unlike film, where you can watch the first 10 minutes and then use footage from all of it because you have the file, a lot of the time with games, people can tell how much you completed from looking at your footage. They're like, wait a minute. Yep. You've, Why wait, you've only got the level the one sword. Yeah. The game. That's right. Something you unlock seven minutes into the game, they don't even like now, mention it, you know? like This, this was something that was an awesome. issue in uh, Jim Sterling's uh, Final Fantasy uh, review. The 16 is the new one? Yep, or 15? Yes. 
16, 16 is the newest whichever one, one we're on. Final Fantasy New was all of Jim Sterling's footage was from a particular point in the game. So it's like, oh, oh. Well, hmm. I think that was because that was the crux of the point that Sterling w was making about the game and, and not liking it. But it was strange nonetheless. Someone just mentioned like the Cuphead reviews, like only the tutorial, right? Or was that just gameplay? I can't remember. Uh, you talking about the like, famous clip thing? The, 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 was the, that the, Takahashi? Yeah, well, that wasn't a review, right? That was just footage. No, that was just no, that, that was, was just something that got fun. uploaded for some reason. <laughs> they were Why just poking fun at him, <laughs> making fun. Why did they post that <laughs> to make fun of him? <laughs> I don't know, but no, thank you, thank I'm you. Just saying, why did why yeah. did the original like the the company that he worked for why would they post that thinking yeah this is good this it's, is good people will love this, this. this does look reputable at our jobs yes any cuphead footage is good cuphead footage wasn't that uh <laughs> then there was the doom eternal one right there was uh yeah. Yeah. Guy. oh yeah. Same guy. Yeah, yeah yeah good old dean <laughs> it's very oh, bad at video games Deemed too low. Hell, sometimes they ironically say this about games they haven't played, attacking reviews of stuff that well, isn't does, even out. Well, doesn't matter. They didn't play them because they were waiting matter. for your review to see if it's worth playing. Well, a lot of the time, you're going to have access first because you're yeah. press. Uh, but even then, people don't need to have even played the game to have the perspective that you ought to play a game to completion before you review it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. What does it mean? Does it like the principle develops in real time? It's like, you need to have played to completion every game that I personally have played. With all the other ones, I can't have an opinion. Yeah, like, you them. can't review my review until you've played the game fully? Like, no. I, there's I plenty we can review. I don't know about that. Exactly. I think, it's, I think it's like a basic expectation of a reviewer that they had played the whole game. Like, that, uh, like if you want to be extensive and play it several times, that's preferred, but at least finish the game once. That's like the base requirement, I'd say out yet. This argument is treated by many phantoms as the ultimate gotcha, the holy grail of self-soothing justice. It, it sounds like they got you. <laughs> sounds You're very, like very, very you. upset. You sound a bit big mad about it. Yeah. No, not Jim Sterling. They bald. never get mad. Prove a reviewer <laughs> didn't a finish bald. a game or just convince <laughs> themselves of it. They can discredit said review completely. Of course. Well, no, but the point would be that the review is discredited itself. Like, the, they're trying to point that out. It's, they would uh, say that it's, there's something wrong because with it. It's rare that they would simply say, you didn't even finish the game, but even if that's something that's being said, it's not hard for people to pick up what the point is. Like, oh, so they fucked up, or they've got things wrong, or they, they're they not very good, and they, they couldn't beat the later levels sort of thing. Which is another yeah, thing, by the way. The most passionate fans don't want to hear you talk about how hard the first few levels were and how you didn't like that. They're going to be like, um... Okay. Well, part of the part of the problem is that um, people have it's the reason why people do harp on this stuff. Like we were talking about with like the Cuphead gameplay. If that's your mode of play for that game, that's going to be pretty useless. The information that the perspective you have on that game is going to be pretty useless for most people because you're just not playing it at the same level that they are. And I'm not even talking about like a you know an extremely high level of play, but just like a normal average level of play. And it's and people, you know, when people buy these games, a lot of the people who are going to be looking at these reviews probably have some expectation of playing it to the end. Mm. So you you probably need to try to mirror, you know, the experience that those people are going to have and and want to get information about from you. And the only way someone can discredit something you've said that's incorrect about a game is by having more knowledge than you have, which is usually exactly. going to come from them having played the game, which they usually yep. can't do because you're press and you have it early. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's relevant yeah. for Armored Core just coming out because already having people on it's like, the first boss is too hard. This is a bad game. It's like, are we still not, have we still not arrived at the point where it's like, oh, FromSoft game, that's probably going to be a hard game. Yeah. And just, and just imagine all the games that you've played. Like, if everybody's played a, a MGS5, I have not played all the way through it, but imagine reviewing the game after playing like the first two hours versus the next 50. MGS5 like two, is like. Two Hundred hours long or something. I don't know. Yeah, I never yeah, finished like, it, and I have fifty hours. I don't in the even game. know if I finished it. If I got to the point that <laughs> I was didn't the finish end. it, that was. Uh, a, I I think it was the, when they started recycling the missions, I was. Yeah, I was, I that's thought, right. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I came to a yeah. point where where I thought I was done, and I was like, okay, now here's more. It's like, wait, what? I thought we okay, and then I finished so after you got Skullface. I don't even remember. Like, like DS2, where it's like, oh, Dragon Rider again? It's like, yeah, but he's on a really small platform. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> like, great. And he just falls no, off no. it, and you're like, oh. 
that was an old uh, SNES game trick where like after you defeat all these bosses, they would just have a final boss rush at the end and just recycle every single boss. Like almost oh, every game did yeah, that. The, they did that in <laughs> Devil May Cry 4, but that's because the game was like horrendously unfinished. The oh, entire yeah. back half of the game is backtracking through the same levels as a different character. And then you also get boss rushes of all of the old bosses just over again. Is that the one that Metal Gear Solid yep. 5 just reminded me of something that is related to the way that games are reviewed. I I could be wrong about this, but as I remember it, a lot of the initial reviews that came out for Metal Gear Solid 5 were the product of a like a, a, a five day long, eight hours per day uh like boot camp where they yes. had to play yep. the game and try to complete it within that time and so plenty of reviewers would have needed to mm. it was the chicken hat that made you invulnerable yep. um and 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 so you think about the idea of um what are the optimal ways of essentially creating and presenting a review to people playing a game under those conditions where you're in a rush to get it done would be like another example of how the way that you go about it can sort of change your experience with the game, the information that you pull from the game, mm -hmm. and what you're going to provide to play. So we aren't going to be playing it like that. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really important, and it probably ought to be encouraged more in reviews, some level of disclosure about the way that you went about it. Not necessarily for circumstance, like, not just for circumstances like that, but how many times did you play it? How long did it take you to complete it? Like, this information is not going to, it's, it's never going to be unproductive to be mm -hmm. clear about how much time you spent with the game and, and the, how you did it. And the environment having... that they were put into, like, you know, this kind of super fast uh, kind of expo, like where you get gift bags and you're kind of like, you got to have a paid uh, hotel and, uh, you know, uh, food Russia. and oh, everything Russia. like that. Like that, that, yeah, there's, there's a certain energy to that. Like imagine watching the same movie by yourself on Netflix at home versus watching it in a theater that cheers at every uh, major event who's like who are like shouting when when uh, their favorite hero shows up on screen things like that you're going to get two very different well, experiences well watching those. it like, in a theater with the people who made the movie set to your left and to your right yep. after they mm -hmm. paid you to come here and paid yep. for yeah. your room and they're watching drinks you and, and looking everything. at you the whole time did you like that wasn't that a funny joke Mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> laugh laugh at it laugh. Dude, aren't you laughing isn't it fun look how much everyone's like how come you're the only one in here not laughing yeah, you're, you're not gonna get a bag. bag you never you're not gonna get back. an an honest opinion in that from someone in that situation like with all that pressure like it's it um is, well yeah, yeah it's like, it's even like, talked about the cultural element of just the quicker the better every time for everything yeah how quicker 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 uh, with uh, reviews that everybody feels very much oppressed especially for these uh outfits right like journalist websites especially the smaller ones that there's like a real pressure to get it out as soon as possible you know that the embargo date is the date you want your review out because later people don't care as much people are less interested you lose out in those tasty views your service isn't as necessary yeah it's and, like the uh, difference doesn't work for games doesn't work for games like imagine watching uh, Home Loan at four on DVD. It'd be the m worst experience ever. But what uh, being like Rich Evans watching it right next to Macaulay Culkin and making the fun of it <laughs> would be the most hilarious thing in the world. So it's just like yeah. it's all about context, especially with yeah. Uh, I got I got kind of kind of caught up in games like uh you know when I went to expos and stuff and played Overwatch before it came out. People would stand in lines for three hours to play like two matches of that game, and then when it came out uh you know people got bored of it you know it was a good game for a while and people were really excited for it but it, the environment of like oh my god you got to wait in this huge line and and uh wait hours to be able to try this amazing game but when it's released to the, the public people were waiting for hours to play lawbreakers <laughs> <laughs> and that I game remember. died really fast yeah their triumphant invalidation won't make the review disappear and it won't stop them being so fragile they get violently angry over a reviewer what is violent you're angry yeah. about oh, I dude. mean but also you're getting angry over their reactions yeah. so. I'm so I'm so tired of it no one yeah. cares <laughs> nobody cares yeah, but also, guys... Jim Sterling's the one who um well, Jim Sterling has opinions regarding violence and who it's okay to enact it against, so I don't really care about their opinion on well, what- at this point are we saying? If someone says, say. like, this review is shit, you should go off. Are they like, whoa, violence. Violence. Wow. No, what do they consider violence? Imagine, imagine the reviewer just starts out by telling you how his morning went. It's like, it's not relevant. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in your morning, Theo.
<laughs> I'm not interested in my morning. <laughs> and I was there when it happened. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I got up. I made some coffee. <laughs> I saw a little board. Yeah, Seven out of good. ten. So they'll be left with annoying and hollow feeling in their terminally irrational minds when they terminally find themselves irrational. unable to move me, on. Though. I but still, get it, man. They believe but in the you're upset. I guess it's, it's just really uh -huh. funny. Uh -huh. guys buried in By the way, I cut out loads of just ripping into annoying comments. That's what. But well, we're twenty minutes into That's a twenty-nine minute video. Yeah. Why are we going to be so dramatic? Either he's just, like, what, he's what just been bitching so far. What is this he hasn't made a point. What does the script look like? Is it just internet people are freaks like 20,000 times <laughs> repeated? The, the truth's got to get out there, okay? Accusation. No. The sheer pointlessness and ineffectiveness of the argument isn't what's stupid, however. No, that's not what makes you didn't play the game a fucking imbecilic way to defend a video game from a review. But it would totally be... F this is the thing that annoys me about the video. It's like, can you not accept a single possible time where it would be valid? Not one. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah, where someone plays it for ten minutes and then does a review and says and 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 presents it as being pretty comprehensive. Surely everybody would agree well, yeah, at like that you, point. You kill a couple of hollows in Dark Souls, and then you say like the combat is absolute shite. You just kill a bunch of things that can't even move. Well, or, you, you like, know, um, if, if we're talking about uh, this game, like we're talking about uh, Tears of the Kingdom, if you said, yeah, no, I, I completed the the opening like Sky Islands, and then when I got to mm -hmm. when I got to land, that was it. I was done. So, yeah, you're missing like you know. five, six game mechanics you can't even use yet. Well, but then you're, you're missing gonna... like ninety five percent of the game, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, uh, but no, it's probably stupid. every time. Wanna... Are you going to talk about that part? I don't think so. If you do, how did you watch videos on it instead of playing the game? That. I, 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 what makes it a strategic own goal is the fact that oh. if they got what they wanted and they forced every reviewer to play every game to thorough completion, it would be far more likely to lower a score than raise ah, it. Ah, sorry, it, it was. Wait, what? Yeah, so it was, what? but I guess. Is that bad? the case? What? The, I think the keyword here is forced, because yeah. the way yeah. that it's being contextualized is that the reviewer is, you know, they've done what they wanted to do, and then someone says, ah! and sits them down, chains them up, and says, you must get to the credits before you can say a thing. And of course that would be unpleasant to the point where it would infect your own playthrough. But what people are advocating for is, can you please have integrity, accuracy, and honesty? That's what they oh, want. Yes. Yeah. I know that nice. there's going to be goobers who are just saying it to discredit you and everything, but... The... Uh, can we just can we move past those guys and yeah. actually get... You don't have to care people? about the random freak on the internet who says nonsense. You don't, like, the guy in your YouTube comments, you don't have to care about him, I promise. Yeah. You should have evolved past this a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, I was about to say that. On the internet. You gotta have thicker skin than this. No matter like, what you do, internet. he's gonna be there. And, like, imagine... Cool. Giving a, a review is like, yeah, you know, I watched the first hour of, uh, you know, the the latest Marvel movie. And it is pretty good. You guys could, could should go see it. I give it a, a t an eight out of ten. It's like <laughs> that's the thing. Or, or watching half the episodes of a show or something. That system should be approved of um, by basically every reviewer if they're going to have this kind of point of view. And it would be insane if you were to because we do it these days for TV shows. A lot of reviewers review the whole show based on the first few episodes because that's like what they get yes, given, which is already I weird. Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion was getting decent reviews based, which is already pretty terrible. You yeah, know, those first couple episodes, but wow. But if they'd seen that last episode, would they have been as positive? Probably not. Uh, yeah. well, maybe maybe they would have been. They they weren't quite sure what the tide, you know, where it was going <laughs> to turn. Okay, under, under that, yeah, I, I, I just, I thought that Drax arm would really pull people out, you know. Yeah, that well, was, it yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, yeah, that broke so many people. You've been Full watching a Mike Flanagan uh, show all the way up to the up, right up to the last episode would be very misleading because which, his, which his shows are great usually up to like the last episode. Which one? Which one? Well. I, I might be in the minority opinion, but I, I didn't like, I've not seen all of them, but I love the two, uh, Bly Manor and um, Hill House. I did not like the last episode as much as the rest. Uh, Midnight Mass, I think the last episode was nonsense. I, I've, uh, heard, I've heard that one's like the worst. Ending, yeah. But mm, yeah. Uh, Hill House's ending, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Bly's but... ending, I like. Hill House was, well, ah, I understand why they did it, but they should have went with um, the, the, the proper ending. They should have, like, committed. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Liver and onions. I didn't like liver and onions before I was made to eat it, and I 
resented liver and onions afterwards. You can't improve someone's opinion of something by cramming it down their throat. But yeah, but that's not what people are trying to do. They don't yeah. care about your Don't opinion. review video games and fuck off. That's like a false yeah. premise. Was it crammed down <laughs> your throat when you reviewed it in the first yeah. place? Well, I'm saying that you need to be, like, locked in a dungeon until you complete it. They're asking you to play it to the end. Yeah. To develop a more comprehensive understanding of the game. That's it. Do they care about your accuracy more so than your opinion? This yep. is such a weird analogy. This is more like an analogy of like making a first person shooter fan play a sports game or making a strategy game fan play an RPG or whatever. That that'd yeah. be a more appropriate analogy. This is no, if you're gonna actually provide a complete analysis and review of this game, you should probably have a pretty good idea what it, what the entire game plays like. There's so many simple incredible. aspects to it. Just when you say any broad statements about the mechanics or the soundtrack or the levels or the enemies or the combat, and you've not actually consumed all of those things from the thing, people start getting a bit weird about it. Like, Oh, and I, I guess I, uh, cause I thought I had guessed right, but no, what I thought the point was going to be was the more that somebody plays the game, the more likely it is that they're going to understand the mechanics so well that they might start noticing flaws that would otherwise <laughs> yes, pass exactly. by somebody who's not as familiar with the mechanics, you know? Which like, doesn't need to be a problem, more, of course. Well, I mean, it, I think everybody would generally consider it to be a good thing because it's based yeah. on a more comprehensive understanding of the game. Yeah. But it seems the point is, no, if they had to play it longer than they wanted to, their bias would start to seep into the point that it would infect the review, which is a weird point to make. That you're so compromised in terms of your yeah. bias, yeah, it would be impossible for you to 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 be accurate anymore. I think it's nuts that um the the counter argument is, yeah, well, I'll become so biased against it, I'll give it an even worse review. Like my whole All issue right. with you so oh, far yeah. was he, how you're he, too biased in a bad way. No, that's <laughs> that's on you, so my guy. Yeah, you fucked up. This is worse for you, not me. <laughs> Part of the. Big, I'm just like, madder at you now. <laughs> <laughs> like, we should be trying for some level of objectivity, not you just being a bitter mm. asshole, yeah. you know? Well, then someone, someone just points out a simple mistake. They say, oh, you said this was this, and it's actually this. It's like, f*** you, next time I'm going to say even stupider shit, just to annoy you. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay? And, like, if you're really just falling off a game that hard, you can still put out what you have with the understanding and the intellectual humility to say how much time you put into the game. Exactly. Fine by making them sit at the table all night and finish the plate. I guarantee you that if I felt forced to engage with Zelda's broken weapons and ass-backwards controls more than I felt I had to, if I felt obliged to play more of the bits I thought were convoluted wastes of time, I'd have given it a lot lower than a 7 out of 10. Backward-ass logic is this, when you're like, you don't want me to give it a more thorough review because it would be more negative. Yeah. It's like, like, I was wondering, more I wonder about that. Good. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck if it's more negative if it's more accurate. Exactly. But yeah, but not necessarily. Surely there's yeah. got to be some instance where playing it more would improve your experience. I mean, come on. Because you in come to understand what you were doing wrong, for example. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, it's the same reason why if you, you know, it's not quite the same because non-interactive, but you watch a film twice, sometimes you can benefit greatly from that experience. And, and we've, you know, when it comes to really good films. A lot of people soured almost... on Endgame on their second watch. That's a good I feel like you... I feel like you don't really know a film until you rewatch it. That's when you like you take I, your I, emotions I, out of it and get the truth. And the oh, fact well, that I, this guy is like like uh, appealing to this thought process for video games is crazy to me. We're not even like, finished it the first time around. <laughs> like, that's what yeah. I'm for an easy games example, Gosh. Dark Souls One. Uh, I've seen this is anecdotal, but I've seen both myself and so many people on their first time through that game get to the bell gargoyles, get just rinsed over and over again <laughs> for hours, <laughs> and hate the game. They hate it. Then they beat it and they love it. Yeah. Like, something starts to click after they are good enough yeah. to beat that boss and suddenly they're in love with the game well it happens sometimes that you can play a game for a very long time and just be completely out of sync with it yeah. you just don't get it you you aren't in rhythm with what uh is the most optimal experience uh with that game and then the mm. longer you play it you just start like oh shit okay yeah now i get it you know that Everything happens to click you're robbing yourself of those potential eureka moments with a game mm -hmm. Um, and you're the less freaks like me. Well, yeah, it's so funny, right? Or, okay. uh, if you suggested that could happen, that 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 could yeah. happen, you could enjoy the game. That's it's insane. Possible. Why would you ever say that? I'm just gonna hate it. You're like, oh, yeah, you can have a better understanding of it and like understand why you like the things that you like, why they work, why they don't work. And it's such a narrow-minded like point of view. I don't get it. This is such a weird take too. Like, is 
is this kind of take the idea that reviews need to be positive to talk about like the idea that we, 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 we must praise Zelda game because it's a it's a Zelda game like it almost sounds like yeah here is that Sterling is very heavily invested in the conversation around it and particularly I guess Nintendo fanboys specifically getting mad about the review that it's so mired in that that it's almost impossible to move past that to get to the fundamental conversation which is do you need to complete a game to review it properly you know why should you do that what are the arguments against it it's just too mired in the meta mm. what benefit is there to not completing a game unless you're specifically trying to just describe your first impression <laughs> well if you're not a reviewer time. not much if you're me and <laughs> yeah. it's a terrible game many <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> No, but for a reviewer, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't see how ever finishing a game is going to be worse than not finishing it. Yeah, yeah. this argument right. about like I how mean, backward I this is. More context. You, you just have to accept this argument of if you were already not liking it, you are going to like it less. But then again, that assumes that the point of playing it more is to necessarily have a positive review of a game rather than a better review of a game. Is so, exactly. And, Maybe the um, maybe the element here is because we've talked about this in the the cinema aspect with what the duty is of a reviewer and what a good review uh, what a good review is. When we go to the you know video game side, if we were to ask Jim Sterling, what do you think is the duty of a good video game reviewer? What should they strive to do, and what makes a video game review a good mm -hmm. one as opposed to a bad one? And maybe Jim Sterling is operating on a completely different like goal or mindset of what a video game reviewer needs to be doing well something that maybe maybe uh these types of journalists were trying to cover more or less every major release rather than doing the thing that uh i like if they went to video game, yeah they need well, to go to some more video game festivals all right what well what i mean is that i because you know i oh, no. <laughs> for instance, would feel compelled to cover every single game no, obviously, it's not every single journalist individually is going to do it. But in the case of does selling review like a lot of games in a year, or only like five or six in a year, because if there's that pressure as well of you want to be making sure that you're doing reviews for every major release, that just limits the amount of time that you have available and the passion that. you're going to have interest in each of them. That's that's true. Are you going to yeah. be particularly interested in every major release that comes Over out? Or, uh, exactly. So if there's that too. And I, I just want to touch on what Rag said, like the requirement for a reviewer. Like, if let's say it was a list of three to five things, don't you think finishing the f game would be on it? Like, that's just like such a base requirement. <laughs> well, and the, 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 the sort of empathy I can give is when you deal with a game that's enormous, and it's like, what does it mean to complete it? It's like, I understand yeah, that, okay. I understand. Um, but as you can see, uh, as evidenced on the screen right now, uh, one thing I know the the controversy surrounding this whole review had was that 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 is a low amount of hearts, is it not, for a Zelda game? I'm gonna have to ask my Zelda experts here, like metal. <laughs> Sorry, I just tuned out for. You're if Last you ask me, sentence. I'm like I I'm I'm like linked to the past Zelda. I was about to say I I'm like twenty. Yeah, I think you can get <laughs> you into... gotta get all twenty. I, I think you can get into two rows with, with your eggs. <laughs> well, that was something that um, uh, still got picked up for, basically, as controversy on the review, is that there's a shit amount of hearts in all the footage. Oh. Meaning... Yeah, you, can't, you, you, weren't, you, you wouldn't even be able to get the Master Sword with these amounts of hearts. Mm. Um, it just tells you how much you played the game, doesn't it? At a yeah, game. yeah. You, you need to do yeah. a, a, a bunch of... Uh, uh, what do you call The shrines? That's right. There's a lot of them, and then you get all the... Uh, all the parts yeah, I... for that, and here's the thing, Tears of the Kingdom uh, has a lot of shrines, some of them are pretty good, and some of them are fine, because they vastly improved those shrines, I think, over the over Breath of the Wild. Anyway. Take Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun, for example. It's a very good game. I gave it a 7.5, and its fans didn't bitch about it. Like the similarly oh, scored, but not quite as good <laughs> Tears so of the bitter. Kingdom. I had a lot of nice things to say about it, but a lot of complaints as well. Chief among them, the fact that its limited weapon and enemy variety meant the game ran out of content long before it ran out of levels to put them in. Bolt Gun starts off hilarious and exciting, an incredibly fun pairing of the ludicrous 40k and the over-the-top 90s-style shooter. There's a button dedicated to yelling fanatical threats a press f to show contempt button uh, you'd like perfect. that perfect go on 
But over the course of hours and hours... I was about to say, the argument has been made yet. We're waiting. <laughs> It'll be here yeah, in a second now. Yeah, all right. The yeah. gameplay, while never diminishing in quality, grew more and more exhausting. The further I got into it, the more tired I became, the more its little minor flaws began to bug me, and the lower my opinion sank. For me but see, that's fine. If you, yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you that's play okay. it for an hour, and you're settling on a 10 out of 10, then you play it for three hours, and you're like, actually, I'm over nine. You play it for 10 hours, and you're like, this is kind of a six. That's it's fine. Kind of like I'd call that new, important information. Yeah, the new, the inform of the yeah, yeah. That new information stronger. creates new opinions. Like, it's, it's this guy's insane. <laughs> Yeah, and you can you can describe stuff in review. You don't have to give the entire review like you, how you felt at the end of the game. A lot of games don't really hold up through the end. Sometimes the ending makes the game even better, but a lot of times it's kind of like it kind of falls off a little bit. Maybe the last boss wasn't yeah. great, or maybe the last bit kind of seems repetitive. Great example. Um, I'm kind of again a minority opinion on this one, but uh, Alone in the Dark 2008 has like an episodic TV show format. It's got a lot of flaws. Not the best game in the world, but. For the most part, it has a pretty good pacing until the last act of the game, where for no reason whatsoever, you have to search the entire like GTA style open world area and burn down like 30 uh, evil roots <laughs> for no reason before you can get to the last act of the game. And it's like the, the biggest slog of the game. But had you not played up to that point, not reviewed that point, you probably would have gotten a different experience had you yeah. it, because you don't realize it's even in the game. That's like the last couple hours of the game. Yeah, you don't get a full experience. And I just, I can't imagine uh, looking at a review and someone says, like, uh, my enjoyment factor was lowering the more I played it, and me going, like, well, then you shouldn't have fucking played more of it, should you? And then your review <laughs> would have been better. put out a positive review. Don't you know that's your job? That's being positive. So the funny player is just going to go, huh? So this is just going to, like, sour quite quickly. Then, it's so, right? it's so I think funny the video because you just. Way too I think that's what it is. With the view that the that the you know whoever's getting mad at Sterling over the over the review, it's necessarily saying, well, you should have played it more because then you would have thought it was better. That seems to be mm. baked into yeah. every single argument that's being made. I think that's what it is. Like, what's the best possible way to get a good review of the game? And like, if you're taking an approach that's going to give you, a, you know, potentially a negative review, I don't want you to get that. I, uh, I, I, I think that's I think it's as simple as that. self own of the Zelda fans. Mm. Yeah, if, if we ignore like the frothing idiots online, you have to assume mm. that these people who are saying you didn't play much of it, implicitly what they're pl pointing to there is you were inaccurate about something because of your lack of familiarity. Yeah, and you wouldn't have exactly. been if you had played more. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a kind of a weird, weird thing I've been noticing, especially with bigger reviewers. Like, has anybody been following vaguely related but as i mean even following the uh, linus tech tips drama recently yes. somewhat yeah somewhat. Nope. uh like one of the things that came up like a, a gamers nexus did like a whole expose of all, all these in, mm. inaccuracies and kind of like biases like where they would review things that they were uh sponsored by higher and they, they, they like took a prototype a very expensive prototype auctioned it by accident and they didn't get it back and a bunch of other stuff and just like continually uh misrepresenting stats and performance of various different bits of hardware which you know thousands if not millions of people have been influenced by their their reviews of video cards and gaming hardware and all this kind of stuff right anyway one of the things that they kind of said i think linus said this in his kind of knee-jerk response was that uh how he needs to kind of read the room while he's doing reviews to kind of like review it properly and that's such a weird aspect it's like why would hardware performance uh and your estimation and analyzation of that hmm. matter at all what other people think like if anything, you should practically be isolated from other people's opinions because maybe everybody else is getting it wrong. Maybe everybody else has got a sponsorship or isn't testing it properly. If you're actually properly reviewing a, a graphics card and getting, you know, yeah. FPS on high, you know, on medium and low, that should be pretty objective. And you shouldn't, it shouldn't matter if everybody else loves it or hates it. You should, you should be able to independently verify what the quality of a thing. Yeah. And, and, and great. you've highlighted a time where it's super important because this comes down to like people buying products that are designed to function. Like that is the primary purpose. At least with entertainment, there's an angle that even if it's shit, you yeah. might still like it or whatever. But um, you know, we still have examples in history of how these things matter. As far as I'm concerned, like um, I, I don't have as many of the details anymore. But as far as I'm aware, Total Biscuit's the reason Dark Souls made it to PC, which was always like a huge achievement because people fucking no. adore Dark Souls. It was huge, and so is From Software on PC now. Um, and likewise, the only big significant breakdown of Soma that was on the internet when it came out was Joseph Anderson's, and he f had no idea what he was dealing with when he played the game. 
I knew so many people in the comments being like, oof, good thing I can dodge this one. Like, oh, that would have been bad. Like, oh, God, this is, yeah, yeah get it. Oh, that site. sucks. No. Well, <laughs> that the, sucks. The, the money he cost frictional. And that's the thing. It's, uh, it was done with inaccuracy and clumsiness. It's weird because he's not usually like that. Like, uh, he pissed everybody off with his Mario Odyssey review, right? And he got, didn't he get all of the, what are they called, moons or something? Yes. Something like that. I think I it remember. collected every single one. Yeah, and and that's commendable to me. The fact that you would do hyper completionist, and then I feel like you you have a strong standing for what your opinion might be, even yeah. if I completely disagree with it. Um, but like Soma, I don't even think he played through it uh, more than once. When it's a game filled with choices, which is an interesting thing to do. Uh, when you want to do like a definitive review of it, because he's just he just found it so unpleasant, I guess. But. In any case, uh, this is the motive behind a lot of people, and to just dismiss them as the crazies who will get a worse review if they keep complaining is so f***ing bitter. Yeah, yeah it's just funny to me, just th talking about this now, just thinking back to the Resident Evil 4 coverage we did, and just playing through the game like four times. Yeah. <laughs> Every everybody. It was like, oh. And then even the just putting little challenges out there that have nothing mm -hmm. to do with the game, but just see what's going on. And what... While I was doing this, it was, it was like in, uh, what was it? On oh, the beginning, when you wanted to kill both Salvadors on professional or super professional, whatever it was. Yeah. And you just have to do it over and over again because you really want to do it. And then you realize, oh, when I shoot this one uh, zombie man over there, there's like 15 different things that can happen every time. No, dude, we learned yeah. so much about the mechanics it's... of that game by setting ourselves difficult challenges because you have to rely on mechanics and therefore it's like... Yeah. Uh, how do I get him to reliably, reliably stagger? And then you're like, we, we can't, um, <laughs> unless you do, you know, this many shots in this place with this gun at this time, and it's like, oh, okay. And then you actually get a whole map of the mechanics in your head. And if someone said yeah. like, yeah, but that made you hate the game more, right? And you're like, um, it may <laughs> have, made you learn the game more. Well, it may, it may have made me give it a lower review than I had before I figured out how everything works, but I don't see how that's a bad thing. Ooh, yeah, honest. because Good you know how you have it put in your review. And it just I mean, gives it, replay it, value. If the idea of a reviewer is to have the general gaming population be more almost blissful in their ignorance for the real quality of a game and its mm -hmm. mechanics, I don't know if I'm going to go along with that. It's almost yeah. like a like a mildly abusive relationship where you're like, okay, if you if you demand that I will play more of this game, I'm going to not acknowledge this game as being as highly rated as you want me to rate it as. It's like, what is your, even your purpose at that point? If, it, if that's if you're treating as like, how dare you ask me to play more of this game? I'll rate it lower because I will not like it as much the more I play it. It's like, what, what do you realize what your what your purpose is? <laughs> yeah, it's really unrelated. You can, I mean, that's what Mala sometimes puts puts us up to. It's like, hey, you all play Gollum and stream it. And it's like, fuck, why? And then it's just all just a really good time uh, overall, even though the game is piss. But it's just just good things like even if you if you let's say your content brand is like oh man i can make so much content out of this while playing the game and figuring stuff out and then make a review on top well that's crazy and then you guys made this whole super cut out of it that people were enjoying and then we cover it here on efab it's like i don't know we all had a pretty good understanding of the game i think so i just, just i just see positives and playing the game to the fullest at least once i don't know no negative to that at all <laughs> Familiarity, as this game would appreciate, breeds contempt. And while I still like Bolt Gun, I honestly wish it were a few hours shorter so it didn't outstay its welcome. Thanks for the Bolt Gun review, I guess. <laughs> okay. Red Fool yeah, huh? is a more extreme but perhaps a better weird. showcase God. of how demanding reviewers spend more time with a game doesn't serve that game's interests. My first few hours with Red Fool... How can the game's interests? It's the consumer's interests. Yep. How can it Seriously, not serve he, the game's interests, though? He thinks reviewers' job is to praise games, not actually review them. I think that's it. That, 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 that's pretty much it. That it, it serves a game's interest because it means that it would be easier for developers to make good patches and balances to a game if they get the most comprehensive information possible on what is working and what isn't working. So, I mean, yeah, you could even make but an argument that it do. isn't a game's interest to get these types of reviews because then they know what to fix. Seen they know how to make a, a better sequel. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see this happen yeah. a lot with game patched games like Darkest Dungeon 2. One, even. Those games went through a lot of iterations based on high-profile community feedback. That game yeah. kicked my ass. Most people don't remember that, but there was a period where people hated Dark Ascension because they added in corpses and a couple other mechanics that people weren't really on board with. 
it wasn't corpses. until like a lot of feedback that they finally removed corpses or they no they didn't remove them they made no, options are still there you, you still can make it optional still stuck. yeah yeah you can turn them off if you want to which are you sure yeah they added as optional i believe but there's there's powers that people have to like get rid of corpses what it, would be the point of those powers you, you have the option in one they i in two i think they're right. mandatory they didn't add it as uh, but two is like almost a completely different game at that point but yeah mm -hmm. in, in one they were introduced and people were really mad there was actually i think a period when it went into the negatives in steam reviews and then they made a couple different things optional they also added like a less punishing mode and everything radiant mode or whatever it was and that's back up to nine point or I'm, nine gonna, out of 10, so. I'm gonna be like I, I guess throw a wrench in the conversation and say I think people were wrong to be mad about corpses though. Uh, I think they're a very important part of the game and make it function and what makes it function. I don't mind corpses, but I'm losing my mind with that sanity shit. Can't manage mm -hmm. it. <laughs> That's the whole That's game. Another really important part. <laughs> I know. I like game. it. No, no, no. I, I wasn't this yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying I suck. That game whooped my ass. I'll, I'll get back to it. Though. God, I remember Darkest Dungeon one. I think I I, I, I named them after people. In chat, and I think and called one, I, I named one Mauler, and I think I had six Maulers in that game. <laughs> I remember I, the I had, I had two Fringies actually, the Plague Doctor. <laughs> I put 600 <laughs> hours in that game. It's fan fantastic. What about the second one? Uh, the I second played... one is pretty good. I didn't hate it. I felt it was a bland, mediocre, minimum viable product of a game, but it was relatively inoffensive to me. After playing it a little while, I came away thinking it was dull, but more or less serviceable. Then I kept playing. I kept playing until I found out how f***ing repetitive it was. Yeah, but imagine yeah, but what if you it, hadn't. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what what if it was really good when you imagine kept playing Imagine if you hadn't, though. Yeah. I feel like that's... Isn't that even a worse point, though, that you realize, oh, if I'd stopped... I might have given a downright misleading. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, this goes both game. directions. It's like, are you happy mm. that you give misleading reviews because you don't know how familiar you would Whoops. be with games? Mm. Yeah, isn't this a isn't this a great reason why you should play games longer? Holy yeah. shit! This is what I mean. This, this video just completely <laughs> fits itself. Yeah, you should be <laughs> thankful no that I have no integrity. You're like, okay, <laughs> you know, wait, wait, wait. Right. I kept playing I think until I Jim found out should it. Uh, review games and not play any of them and give everything 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. That way the 10 out of 10 scores Everyone's are protected, happy. preserved yeah. forever. Cool. No one will, uh, no and, one will ever and be and that, <laughs> that way you can put out a thousand reviews a day and you make all the fanboys happy. It's like, yes, you gave it 10 out of 10. I agree. Right. And then anybody who disagrees, it's like, well, what do you want? I didn't play it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking we'll just about. Great. Actually, play and review ten games, and then just change the visuals every single time a new game comes out of any of those reviews, and nobody will notice. Yeah. Not make much difference, and the fans will be happy. This is the yo, everyone's happy yeah. now. We did it. We solved racism. And yeah, someone's just yeah. made me aware back in the day. Uh, I know we've talked about this in the previous years, but um, Sinuous Sacrifice, right? Hellblade, uh, Sterling Games, yeah, that came right. one out of ten. Oh, the bug. There was a game breaking bug in it, and that's why. I remember when uh, Prey got a four out of ten because of a of a very rare save game bug, and IGN got pissed. Yeah, that happens. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, when you're right, you're right, and how can you ensure that you won't be wrong? You know, mm -hmm. a, a right statement, regardless of how much you've played or how little you've played, is still a correct statement. Uh oh, you're gonna drift into the world of Jim Stilley's perspective on. Everything I say in my review is correct because it's all subjective. Baby. Oh boy! Uh -oh. <laughs> like I agree that it's subjective, but like that doesn't make that true. Well, it's it, there's a lot of things you could say about video games. Well, at anything that is like, oh, that's you can't just say that's subjective. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, like as if that somehow matters to the things that I've said <laughs> that are attacking your argument. I hate it, man. This is why I'm I wish not... they would just separate it, and so we'd have an understanding of what they're talking about. Because this is just this person is just rambling. Like, there's no thought process. The things here that they're contradicting themselves with, you'd f catch that in a script normally. But this just seems to be, like, completely just how they feel about it. Like, there's no actual research or anything done here. Did they even elaborate on other positions, like, at the beginning, the parts that you skipped? Wait, uh, what, what's in the skipped section is mainly responding to comments that are taken out of, like, comment sections that are insane, you know? Like Did you... they explore the other perspectives, though? Like, like why you shouldn't actually... Like why you don't benefit from them reviewing? Like the, let's the, put it this way: this is the best argument? faith section of the video. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> wow. Okay. While wow. I came away thinking it was dull, but more or less serviceable, then I kept playing. I kept playing until I found out how 
fucking repetitive it was. I kept playing until I found out it had nothing under the surface beyond yeah. the most good. fucking basic, good. basic good. Good. game. You, you have nothing under the surface. Your review is good now job. more accurate. That's neat. You did yeah. it. High five. I kept playing until I found its embarrassing enemy AI and laundry list of bugs. I kept playing until this inoffensive this game... This is your job. That's your job. It's about to say that. <laughs> oh. That's what you're supposed this, to do, man. This At this is point, how it's you like, get your money. I did Find a health inspection bugs. for a restaurant. It was fine. Then I started checking the freezers and I found rats. Dead rats in rats. the freezers. <laughs> I wouldn't have found them if you guys not complained. <laughs> it's like, um, okay. Exposed its weaknesses to such a degree, I felt downright insulted by the thing. What started as Redfall is okay, I guess, became, with time, Redfall is fucking shit. What's the problem? So this the is good. The problem is, see, Nintendo fanboys, you don't want me to review Zelda more comprehensively. You don't because want that. Because then the number Otherwise, out of ten Zelda will go would be downer. like Redfall. That's right. The number would the number would be lower, and that's you don't want that, do you? You, don't want, that. you want number be bigger. So in this weird twisted, this weird twisted uh, uh, kind of viewpoint, you basically play good games less and bad games more to even out the score. <laughs> that's basically what what's being said, right? Uh, it's more of a this is the there's been many attempts over the years for Jim Sterling to shut up people who uh, say mean things and this is the newest strategy and I've just found it absolutely baffling like you don't want me to, be, me to be more honest and thorough because you wouldn't like the results it's like a threat <laughs> and also isn't this like a really bad thing to, to put out there that publisher that potentially uh, less less than up and up publishers and developers might think like hey if we front load all of our content, it doesn't matter after the first couple hours because the reviewers won't even play it. That's a really bad precedent to set, <laughs> I think. I, get, I just can't cause... get over the fact that we've, we've basically just had uh, Sterling admit that I could have reviewed a game positively that was bad, and that's better. It's like, why is that better? I thought that the most important thing, surely, would be accuracy. Surely. Exactly. Hey. That's what you're there All the for. Time. Accuracy, integrity, like, yeah, honesty. Correct. That's the thing, like a trifecta that people will absolutely love about videos, whether or not they agree with them. Mm -hmm. I, like I wonder if there's an asylum somewhere full of people who have been broken by Jim's <laughs> low scores of their favorite games. <laughs> like, well, I wish this all if only he didn't play them. <laughs> with Breath of the Wild, because that was given a seven, right? Or six? Seven or yeah. six? Something like that. Uh, same oh thing happened God. again, and it pisses everybody off. Which, you know, um, you know that, like, it's something that's worth. There is definitely, there can definitely be when it comes to particularly hyped up video game releases where a small contingent of people get pretty rabid about anything like lower than absolutely glowing praise and particularly get fixated on number scores. Yeah. People can get Elden really, Ring. really, really fixated on whether a game gets like an eight, for instance, that an eight is unacceptable because video game scores are so skewed. Yeah. Uh, I'm really <laughs> mad at me about Elden Ring. Yeah, like that that definitely exists, but I mean that exists for basically every Everything. game. And can we not can we not let that ruin our ability to have real conversations? Yeah, like, you, you don't you know? have to dignify these idiots with a response. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, but by doing this, not this kind I mean, of response, you you have you have <laughs> demonstrated yourself to be very big mad about big, about this yeah. topic. Yeah, this is definitely an emotional response. This video. There's definitely a, a fervor, especially about uh, the Zelda games recently, too. I remember uh, Breath of the Wild. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I had some problems with it, too. Most people I know really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'd probably say it's a good game for sure, but I didn't like it as, mo as much as most. But the just the kind of environment around the reviews were crazy. I remember Pro Jared. This is pre Pro Jared controversy, so they had nothing to do with that. I remember he reviewed it and, and he said like a 10 out of 10. Um, and he said, oh, there's a couple of nagging issues, but they're so minor and not even worth mentioning. And I shit, I shit you not, either the next day or the day before, he had a one-on-one -on -one interview with Reggie from mm. Nintendo. And it was like an exclusive interview and everything like that. Okay, it's like, I really can't take your review mm. seriously if you're that kind of cozy with the, are, yeah. are you going to trash their game? And then I talk to Reggie, hey, Reggie, I really respect your work and your games are mm. great. <laughs> Immediately, like there's a price to honesty, and that's just yeah. sort of like welcome yeah. to life. It's just one of those life things. It's, yeah, but uh, it's, a, it's a reviewer thing, though. Like, if you're a reviewer, that's a choice you have to make. Do, do you want to have honesty and integrity, or do you just try to get paid? Like, you have to make that choice eventually. And people like that, they just expose themselves.
It's difficult too, because if you see, uh, you know, let's say you really, really like the Witcher three and you got kind of cozy with, uh, CDPR and, and you know, everything like that. Like I, I, I'm an affiliate of GOG, for example, if GOG did something really bad, I would, I would feel a little sting of guilt criticizing them, but I probably would because I, I count my honesty and my integrity more than a couple bucks of, of, uh, every once in a while from somebody clicking on an affiliate link. It's not that, not that big of a deal. It doesn't end my life or my career if I, you know, criticize them, but I could see getting really cozy with CDPR and then they drop, uh, Cyberpunk 27, and they're like, Ooh, what do I do now? Do I violate that relationship? It can really affect you, your opinion subconsciously or you know, directly sometimes. And yeah, it's dangerous. It's really dangerous if you want to keep their objectivity. You have to kind of, you have to kind of keep your distance. Keep, keep even people you like at arm's length. Mm -hmm. It. I've been party to some f dumb attempts to discredit a negative review too. Final Fantasy XIII. One of my earliest reviews to send the community into hysterics was discredited by some because I said I hadn't beaten the final boss. I'd gotten to that final area. I just did not want to. F bother playing that last tiny stretch because I had loathed everything up to that point and it really didn't oh. matter to me. No, what are you good oh, for oh, then? Matt. Well, I mean, then you kind oh, of, you, then people are yeah. criticizing you, you here? then. That's, I mean, it's just <laughs> a job. It, if that were in the video, you know what I mean? Like, as long as you didn't comment on it then, what did you do? Because it makes me think, like, what did you do? What did you say that pissed everybody off? Yeah. You played what the whole game, you didn't fight one boss. Did you claim yeah. to fight it? Did you claim yeah. that you did the whole thing? Did you... Did you talk about the story and conclu conclusively said that's bad, even though you didn't see the end of it because you just <laughs> didn't do the rest of it all the way at the end? You there. were right there, man. You were right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Matter to Final Fantasy fans who delighted in what they perceived to be a silver bullet. Not one of them stopped to consider that if I hated the game after 50 hours, what on earth would make me turn around and love it after 51? A better more understanding. Maybe more anything. experience. You can't. Like, this is so simple. If one just... hour doesn't make that much of a difference, then just do the hour. Yeah. You're a game reviewer. But this, this all assumes every single person that ever says anything is like, if you played it more, you'd like it. Maybe they just mean if you played it more, you'd be more accurate. That's all. Yeah. Imagine playing oh, Bioshock Infinite and then skipping the ending and then commenting on the story. <laughs> <laughs> the ending would absolutely either make or break that story for you. So critical. In morons, as a concession, I did watch the ending cutscene on YouTube afterwards. Oh my god. You <laughs> as a oh, no. concession. Oh, it's such kindness. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, merciful. I watched the clip, though. You. Oh my god. Oddly, it didn't make me raise the score. Okay. Okay. That doesn't. Why doesn't do you consider matter. that said like a victory? Like, ha ha. Yeah. Showed you. It's like. Showed them. Uh, I, mean, I didn't change my mind. I don't know why he didn't just power through and beat the final boss, but if Jim's opinion was one that I sought and it was consistent, like I could get some value out of a, a video of that review you know, where nuts. it's like okay at least he played 99 percent of it like i you probably can deliver a good sense of what it's like to play generally but like with certain games like if you if you were to like review final fantasy 7 before you even get out of midgar it's like <laughs> if someone was to review bloodborne's bosses and they had old hunters attached and they're playing it all and they said listen i can review the bosses i may have missed a couple at the end but i've, I've got it and it's like which which couple at the end it's like Oh, mm -hmm. you know, Maria and Koss and Ludwig. <laughs> You'd be like, you, you missed, you missed. <laughs> like his, I could see people being furious and be like, whoa, calm down. I fought like 18 bosses. Is that not good enough? <laughs> it's like, turns out, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, Go ahead. For those who don't know, that's just the, those three, three of the best bosses in the whole game. Yeah. <laughs> no, was there was a. Oh, God. I was going to make a cheeky reference and say um, about the whole not playing through the end thing. Like, uh, imagine if he got a Roger Ebert review. It's like, yeah, I watched about 75% of the six cents. Yeah. It was all really predictable. Uh, it really needed like a twist and, and you know, something to kind of really tie it all together. I felt it kind of kind of boring, really. It's like, <laughs> dude, there are some films not... or stories that are told that really don't like everything doesn't click right in until that like latter third. Sort yes. Of thing. It's yeah. the crescendo, it's the climax. There's so many different ways to do it, but like a lot of the times, it's it's essential part of the story to see how it all ties together. Or, say, or, or get the or, pledge, the tune, and the pristine. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, especially uh, 
you, you that's really... another one that ending there imagine not seeing the, the... Dude, prestige doesn't make any yeah. sense if you don't watch the last yeah. dude <laughs> I, I didn't even want to wow. reference it but like We're both about... reveals imagine talking skipping out on both right? reveals imagine if you were playing mass effect and then you got to earth and you're like yeah i think i'm done <laughs> like, yeah. you, and then you go on the internet it's like wait what why is everybody what's everybody so well, up and arms yeah, about bioshock and you give up at hephaestus it's like that's as far as you get it's just like you haven't you you're gonna review the story <laughs> you, and you haven't uh... you know sometimes the ending might not change your opinion sometimes it might change it dramatically yeah that's always a possibility why remove yourself why limit yourself in this way there, there are movies where the ending absolutely makes it. There's some movies where mm -hmm. I, I did not enjoy it up until the ending. I'm like, oh, wow, that makes the whole thing way better. And there's movies, and I won't name the names in case you ever want to watch it, but there's movies where it's, it's, it was all a dream or it was all in the, in the person's mind. And it completely kind of deflates the entire, all the events of the film. Yeah, you can <laughs> so, obviously go multiple directions. Someone just mentioned Hot yeah, Fuzz. Mentioned Imagine you stopped when he first sort of gave up on the investigation. Went back, yeah. just oh, chilling yeah. out. Be like, so oh, many examples. The film just chilled out. Hot, Saw, point, the ending of Saw, the first Saw movie, you don't get to see the twist. Like it's just there's <laughs> so, every movie ending twist would just be. Talk about a movie that needs that final. Yeah. <laughs> all the help it can get. Jeez. Oh man. <laughs> Another review written by someone who didn't finish the game. I think the outlet was IGN, I could be wrong, it was a long time ago, but it came out that their early copy of the game was busted and they couldn't play the final third. Regardless, okay. they published a review anyway, confident ah. that... Okay, so <laughs> I mean, that, that could you be a problem. That... I'm fine with it if you make that clear. Yep. Well, apparently yeah. you knew that, so it seems like they made that clear in that review? Question mark? Maybe. I wanted to it check. Could, but... Might be something afterward, right? But maybe. Yeah. Just tell me. Like... Just tell me. Yeah, that's it. Just tell me. If you said, like, I'm reviewing all of the bosses in Bloodboard except for these ones, and I've heard they're pretty good, but this is my opinion on the, all the other ones, you'd be like, all right, you know, mm. I, I can't take issue with that. That's fine. You made it clear. Play play Wait, so, enough. So people are mad at Jim because he wasn't disclosing these things. Well, it's, it's that... so simple, dude. It's, it's, this Zelda well, game is a it... 7 out of 10, but you haven't played more than like 10% of it. I don't care. Right. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's as far as it goes. And a lot of people will be like, you know, th there's going to be people who'd say you'd like it a lot more if you played more. There's also going to be people who like you, the way you talk about the game, it sounds like you know nothing about it. You need to play more of it. Like those two factions exist. Right. It, it just Which seems like it would be worthwhile to load your statements a lot with, to be clear, I haven't, because when, uh, when we did the forge on it, I was the one who hadn't completed it. And I feel like I said like 10 times. Bear in mind, I haven't completed it. Bear in mind, yeah. this is where I'm at. You know, bear in mind. Disclaimer. This would here. all be subverted sure. by, or counteracted by, uh, just calling it first impressions. And that's the thing. If you play it Zelda really for would. ten percent of the mm -hmm. whole thing, that's probably what you should call that. A lot of it just comes down to being clear about what you're trying to say and where you're coming from. But I think I, I get the impression that if pressed to talk a little bit more about the perspective on Zelda, that Sterling would say. Yeah, I didn't complete it, but I, I think that, but this is it, right? This is it. This is my statement on that game, and that's that's it, and I'm done. Um, rather than rather than admitting, I, yeah, could be wrong, could be completely wrong about a lot of things. I could be wrong, but you know, I have limited time. There are other things I'm more interested in. I, you know, I, I feel like it would yeah. be much. Wouldn't have much posture. to add. A little bit of like earnest honesty can go a long way, instead earnest of just like honesty. this petulance. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This this is pretty. <laughs> this this is a strange video. <laughs> it's some um, it just it denotes such a sense of bitterness, like I said earlier, because uh, I can understand the confusion sometimes. Someone would say like, "What's the what's the equivalent of getting to pass the tutorial or something in uh, in Bioshock versus Elden Ring?" And someone might be shocked to find out it's like probably killing Margo, like thus actually mm -hmm. completing the tutorial. Of El I, I imagine some people would be like, "That's insane! That can that took me like thirty hours." And it's like, okay. <laughs> but like that's the truth. I don't know what to yeah, tell you. Man, that's, that's just reality. Yeah, like you, you haven't experienced experience. anywhere near what it has to offer when you've only done that. I'm sorry. If you have mm. limited time, if you have limited time, then just play like some of those, you know, Sony cinematic like action adventure game. Maybe not go to war because that's pretty long. You know, play, play Uncharted <laughs> yeah. or something, and do reviews of Uncharted because you can beat those in like 10, 15 hours. That's more suitable for that. But they take on yeah. these games that actually have like extensive information, and yeah, then like, they don't do their job. Zelda yeah. is a hundred plus hour game, you know. Oh, it's a chunky boy. <laughs> it's I had a, a lot game. of lots and lots of streams of Although that game. It, it was 
crazy. I think I mixed up Margot's white nose with is it Margot in the film? Uh, it's Margot and Morgot, and then Mergo is in Bloodborne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, all of that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I can see how you mix that up. <laughs> Someone said Margot Get Robbie. Get it right. Margot, Margot Robbie, Robbie the fellow. That's what I thought you were boss. saying at first. <laughs> I'm assuming you mean Margot, right? Not like the, guy in, not the well, guy in the capital. The funny thing so, is, it, you'd be able to understand what I'm talking about easier if I just said, yeah, the the tutorial boss, basically the first, not yeah. the the guy at the front with the horse, but yeah, the big big boy yep. that everyone got stuck on. But as soon as you pass him, you're basically free and clear. You start going real fast. Mm-hmm. One Enter thing a content are... drought where nothing is worth doing. Oh. I didn't say that. Yeah, no. He said that. <laughs> yeah, I said that. <laughs> no good games. No good games. I love all. all games and everyone. They're so. beautiful, and I play them to completion yeah. and then review them. Hooray! Yeah. Okay. You, you know, IGN. I'm clearly. IGN's a, a meme at this point, but I will say the one thing they did do that was actually pretty cool when they were approaching a very big game, like a big replayable game or like an RPG that has like like hundreds of hours of content, and they weren't able to fully analyze everything by the time the embargo was lifted, which is quite often like a week or a couple days, uh, they would do this kind of cool thing, which you can only really do in a written review, but it was they called it review in progress, where they would post an early version of the review and state exactly at what point they're up to and their impressions so far. And they would update that article over time until it was a complete review and they would score it at the end. And I thought that was a cool way of giving you an early impression. If, if you absolutely need to know what they think of the game so far on release date, they'll give you that. But then by the time that they're actually finished, they have a fully fleshed out, not rushed, fully thought out review after they played the whole game. And I think that's a cool compromise. Again, you can't really do that with videos unless you re release multiple videos because YouTube doesn't let you replace videos. But that's a kind of cool compromise, I think, in that regard to be able to kind of work on it over time and update it as you get more of the game done. Probably was. After all, nobody whined at them. Nobody pointed fingers. Nobody said they hadn't played enough. Did they make that clear in the video? If they did, then that's yeah. probably why nobody complained. The difference between me and them, they gave the game a high score. Oh, that's what it was. You Fine. you know that you can uh, like, be correct uh, accidentally? Like, you could yeah. say the correct thing for the wrong reasons, and that doesn't make it okay. Well, and also, like, right. don't pretend yeah. that we're in a world where as long as you give a positive review, everybody will let you cycle past with, like, shitty reasoning. You know, this, the, the toxic positivity thing has to be pushed every once in a while because it's a real thing. It does happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, I, I guess what I'll concede on is it's easier to get away with a shitty good review than a shitty bad review. Probably. Yep. Mm. Yeah. But that gets flipped I've... depending on the... Like, you know, like a, a really bad review of Gollum, but that you, change, you, you call it bad? Like, you'll get, you'll get away with that. Who's going to notice? Yeah. Who's going to care? What is this called turn? He Man, right? Does anybody know? He Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't watch He Man. What, what's can, that guy on can... the left? Who, who is he? He's uh, he's very he's very um. He, Creature he's, of the Black Lagoon. It's he's, uh, he's terrifying. He's a, very, he's a very expressive and interesting looking <laughs> fella. You can tell that it's He Man. What because is he looking it's at? Fucking hideous. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I mean, I love everything and all people. Apparently, it, it's is he Merman? Is that his name? Okay. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that by looking at him. And, and what's the guy on the right? Who's he? Oh. Uh, uh, I'm thinking Frank. Kevin. Paul. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be Kevin. I, I don't Beast, know about that. Beast Lord or Beast Master? Or oh, oh, Beast Paul. Man, is it? Beast Man. Beast Man, and and so. Beast Man yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, right. Merman know, and Beast Man. Okay. Daring today, uh, yeah. yeah. today. Oh, love these I really like Skeletor. Skeletor is Skeletor's the best Skeletor. character. Usually. Skeletor gets yeah. a pass. Really Fuck like you, he man. is the best thing I've ever heard. This podcast has, stands for Skeletor <laughs> and his cousin, there, the there. Horned King. <laughs> there's a guy called Mad at Arms, is there as well? Cool. I'm sensing a lot of Fisto. Fisto is a character, right? Fisto? Oh, Fisto. You pissed it so hard. Pretty sure Fisto is a guy in this. I like Skeletor. <laughs> because that's what it's really all about, isn't it? No, the end it's the not. Day. It's oh, not is. really <laughs> about whether or not you played the game until the end. It's not uh, about how much you it played. Be. It's about no, how much you agreed with their uh, preconceived. Well, that, 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 doesn't, all that doesn't follow off. from being explicitly positive, then, does it? If you have to well, agree, then it goes both ways. Just because you're cynical doesn't mean that everybody else is. Besides, there are loads of things just to go back to There are so many reviewers who have such respect on this 
site for how they may take a controversial opinion, but that they will justify or they'll put the work in. Yeah. I don't like, think they yeah. exist. You know how, that at the beginning is- when you write the script. Get your references, make sure you have all your information and proof, and then you well, get to talk about how you feel about it. the hypothesis. Well, it, it yeah. is interesting that, I mean, have you, have you ever once considered that you might not be very persuasive on this subject? No. <laughs> that that might <laughs> no. be the problem. No, he, he, he hasn't me, thought about me, that for a split Allow so. me to... You know, he thinks this video is question. awesome. Have you, ever, have you ever considered that, let, let's say that we assume that your, your conclusions are correct in these instances, that maybe you're not going about it in the best way to convince people what? that what you're doing is right. I come up with these yeah. crazy <laughs> theories. <Damn laughs> cool. The notions of what games are objectively good. <gasps> I could show them a 100% completed save file and it wouldn't make a difference. I think it would. I, I think it really it would. For once, of people wouldn't Tell us why it wouldn't make a difference. And tell us why. If it- and if it didn't make a difference, then you've spent how many years on YouTube unable mm-hmm. to garner a somewhat good faith audience yourself? <laughs> oh, okay, my dude. You this suck. is so cynical. <laughs> They'd find something else. Oh. As I pointed yeah, out, well, at that point, will. what the fuck is the you point of this video? Yeah, why even bother? bother? People are mean. One There's always argument. gonna be someone who's gonna be like, eh, I'm stupid and I'm gonna blame you for it. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. I don't even have a big channel, and I know that happens. How long have you, you been on this that... platform? What is happening? Yeah, but you learned that from just gaming as a kid. Like, Age of Empires, as a child, people, like, talking shit. You, you get thick skin from the very beginning, and you just learn that's the internet. There's nothing you can do well, yeah, when people are unfiltered. The These point, people are just, like... The point huh? that was just made is, like, oh, you know, even if I was to do the thing they're asking, they're just going to be bad faith anyway, no matter what. Well, then you suck. You <laughs> suck. Like, what you saying? You suck ass at arguing, then. If you have no way of battling this problem, then just get. don't talk about it. You're not well, equipped sorry, to deal with it. The landscape has been laid now, so that there's just always bad faith. So it's like, so what was the point of this video? If if that's all the point is, just there are people out there who aren't nice to me. Okay, that's if, crazy. Uh, can, can, can I give you? A, I can, imagine no why. can I give you an example? I'm going through the my Iron Man video. The number one criticism I had of that video, like a hundred times, is oh, you can't compare Riri to Iron Man. It was, she doesn't have her full movie. When my entire point is that you don't need a full movie. You just need good writing. You can flesh someone out in a single scene. So, so many people yeah. said that. Like, I wake up every morning to someone, oh, you can't talk about Riri. I'm going to have to address it in, like, a podcast or a video of some kind. And I'm going to make sure I have all my references. So I have a make list sure. here of all my favorite cameos. And, like, I'm going to compare it to that. Like, make sure to be very but... bitter and at the end say, even <laughs> if even if she had a whole movie, you guys would have been said anyway. So. T'Challa, Thanos. Both of them didn't have their own movie, you know, and they were both yeah. fantastic. T'Challa was better in his in in his um introduction movie than his own movie. Like, there's was so many worked, counters yeah. to it. T'Challa yeah. was great and there's a War. million counters to Absolutely. it. It just yeah. So but I don't like, know. I can't take this person seriously. Jesus. How the how the f- are you gonna come out here with a video that the subject is people are mean to me on the internet and I don't like <laughs> it when like half the premise of your channel is being really inflammatory? Yeah. Like Jim is I, I, really inflammatory. How do you come out in that ridiculous suit and still have thin skin? Like, I just don't understand. You, you like, just... What? Oh, because it's a replacement for a good personality. Oh, like, oh, what goodness. is common talk? Vain, fat cousin. I don't get it. Yeah. Is he Bane's? No, Vane, Vane. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> the glasses. The gl- Vane's fat cousin, man. The glasses remind me of Vane. And also, yeah. like, I can't, I can't understand how you've been almost reviewing games for professionally for almost 20 years. Almost you, reviewing you ha- games is a good way to summarize. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was almost a review, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just like 2006, I, apparently, I, I I know them from like all the way back in their uh, Destructoid days and stuff like that. It's like been around the bush for quite a while, so I don't know how you don't develop that skin early enough. I'm I've only been doing it for like seven years, and I I I've gotten both ways. I've reviewed things poorly. People have been like, "You just didn't understand. It. You didn't play enough, or didn't watch enough." I and there's a couple instances. I I streamed a game and had mildly positive impressions of it. Somebody bought the game on my recommendation, just having streamed it for a couple hours, and like I didn't like it. And they like they DM'd me and it's like I didn't like this game. I'm like oh, I'm sorry. I... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then and and uh, another one happened. It was like I mildly re- recommended a movie as part of a uh, a genre, and they're like, yeah, I sat down and watched this with my dad, and I didn't like it. Kind of explain yourself, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I I kind of liked What's it. You the... didn't. Know what's to explain? Yeah. It's just very funny. Another recent video. These people have such a warped view of reality that they think their opinions are reality. 
This is why they flip out over Not reviews me, and though. disagree. Not me, though. I was gonna say. Who cares? But it all always comes to You know what's wrong with these bad faith commenters? They think they matter a lot to them. Like, yeah, I don't care probably. about some guy on the internet who's wrong. Do you know how many <laughs> of those there are? There's a lot right of them now. on the internet. With them, they don't think you're disagreeing with their opinion. They think you're fighting the objective mm. truth of the f oh, universe. Shut up. This revelation about their mindset <laughs> has only really hit me in recent months, but it explains so much. Like the amount of times we've laughed at people saying <laughs> yeah, our reviews should be objective, <laughs> great, getting angry because they you can think they just be more accurate for f**k's sake. Yeah. That's all. People think people think the things that they say and believe are true or accurate. Crazy. More than eleven. Not. Like, damn, people, who knew? people think that they're right. Like people that knowingly hold in things, opinions that they think are f***ing wrong. <laughs> what it's a surprise. Just, we've gone through it so many times where it's just like, you know, when when it's like Peter Parker is uh, characterized as a serial killer in uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, people be like, no, he's not. And it's like, excuse me? Are you trying <laughs> to be like, oh, my opinion's objective. Ooh. It's like, no. Wait, no no I, references. <laughs> no, well, that's ridiculous. That's a, that's a ridiculous You've analogy. made it ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous, and I reject it. I, I, I refuse to engage with that. I, when a hypothetical can't happen, or is unlikely to happen, I, I just, I don't take it seriously. Well, I mean, it is a relevant one. Like, th there is information about a game that you can get right or wrong. That's possible. I mean, it, it, it can be simple things like saying, yeah, I really enjoyed playing uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I loved the part when Samus blasted that cannon. That was really cool. <laughs> no, I wish Samus would blast my cannon. Oh, yeah. I mean, what? You can, because she's you can, a good shot. And she's really efficient with firearms and destructive devices, so she'd do a good job. The point like being, it's just incorrect. Informa you know, she doesn't appear in that game, so it's not even, it's not even right. And what, and what do you do with that? It's like, you can get things right or wrong. That's possible. Yeah. There's too much opinion in this review. On the uh -huh. surface. That's not... A, that, that's, who's that's saying that? anyone has ever seen that statement. I've never seen that statement. We often get that criticism. Oh, <laughs> each too much they have too many, and they have too much opinions. <sighs> oh, right. There was that old video of, like, uh, the per purely objective review. It's like, this is a video game. You can play it with a controller. By oh, this yeah, company. They're, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. Yeah. It was but pretty frustrating. Was, obviously, the flaw of the video would just be that follow that logic a little further along. There's still a lot of things you can state as fact about the game. About anything, yeah. really. Yep. Just just watching this, ju just watching literally this still screening. It's like, okay, you can get up to 32 something hearts. You, you can fight the Flame Gliok boss on the Bridge of Halia. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes about 33 to, you know, 50 shots or whatever. I don't know how many, but, you know, things like that. You can actually, you can well, then the compare. Like, oh, provide come... you all of it, you know? Oh, absolutely. So many you, you, could, you could write, a, actually, if you researched a lot of wikis, you could probably write a pretty thorough review just based on secondhand yeah. information if you wanted to be lazy about it. But yeah, it's it's interesting. And There's you're right. You're One right. of them would be an interesting thing to do. Review a game just by third hand information oh, or anything. Yeah. Something. And then yeah. don't reveal it until the end or like yeah. a week yeah. or a month later and just be like, yeah, by the <laughs> like, way, this review you guys loved. Uh, <laughs> and truly randomize uh, the footage too. Like you grab an hour yeah, long yeah. play and then chop it and then have a randomizer pick what order the clips go in. <laughs> that could be really <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Could be interesting. This, it sounds stupid to accuse a review of reflecting the reviewer's opinion too much. You already let us know that was not the issue they took with you. It was that you're not finishing the game and you've got inaccuracies. It's as straightforward as that. It's nothing to do with you Jumping having an opinion. Place, this is this really is like just flailing about, just <laughs> yeah. sort of acting on every single thought that's coming into your head as soon as oh, it arises. Don't get me wrong, oh, it is stupid, but thought, we can rambling. understand the logic. From their perspective, You've just told them the sun is green. To these, you oh might God. have though. You might have said the sun yeah, in Zelda yeah. is green, and, and then they're like, it's, "It's not green." green it's you know? <laughs> Types of Zelda fans. A seven out of ten isn't just a conflicting opinion. Nothing so trivial. It's, it's sacrilegious. Okay, yeah, yeah but when <laughs> if if your <laughs> seven out of ten <laughs> is built on the foundations of several inaccuracies, then yeah, people can be like, "That seven is inaccurate." Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when Sterling says in response, oh yeah? I'll give it a six if you carry on. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> in the Matrix, it needs to be uh, yeah. stamped out, oh. burned off.
and killed oh on my sight God, because it's a terrifying wow. anomaly okay. that okay. introduces can the we, threat. Can we chill out a little bit? <laughs> no, this guy's I, buried in salt. This I, guy is I don't so care. Good. Get over it. Of what uh, they know to be true turning out to be false. When gamers TM get mad over review scores, they don't TM. think. Well, who, who else is mad here? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, oh. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> Everyone's mad. Everybody. Their arguments through, they don't consider how illogical their stated desires are or how infantile they sound. They're lashing out <laughs> how could you say wildly. That? I do, I do love that. It's like, don't you understand? <laughs> You're illogical and infantile. <laughs> that, that's both said. Those two sentences back to back. How could you possibly say that? You didn't watch this match. You didn't re-script this at all. You just picture the person who plays a shit ton of this game, checks the review, says, uh, "I really feel like you didn't get a good grasp of this. You need to play it more, or at least get get to the final boss." Like, I think this is a shitty review, and the game is far better than a seven. And it's like, do you understand how infantile you're being? Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> okay. So triggered, man. That's the thing with um, a lot of criticism. Criticism. It can always like reflect easily. It's like you're so fucking mad, aren't you? And you're like, um. <laughs> that's that's why I brought <laughs> up the Riri. That, that's why I brought up that example of Riri to add to this, where like it just means you didn't even watch the video or pay attention because my main point is that you don't need it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be your full video movie it, like you just a cameo can be enough a five minutes can be enough but people's like idea of criticism is just so like lazy sometimes they just don't really put any thought into it mm -hmm. madly at a threat to their objective truth deep down they don't care how much tears of the kingdom i played they truly yeah, don't they, do. <laughs> they, do, they only care yeah, they do. what they, they think do. is real is real, and they will claim anything, hey, no matter how unreasonable, <laughs> to chop up some so onion. Dramatic? I don't know. <laughs> Dip that reality in gravy and shove it down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think the last thing you shove down your throat is more gravy, just so we're clear. So. And then cut back to this. Okay, so Holy shit. It's Jeez. not about whether the game was finished it's not about you proved nothing the don't pretend like you, you can just keep anything. claiming that forever is cope it's, it's see, not about finishing the game it's like, it's but like, it is though you weren't, it's like, no it's not but it is no it's not <laughs> see i'm, I'm telling you this like, is my issue right we're talking to you. we're talking to anyone <laughs> how meta how meta is it that we're not watching the whole video while uh. criticizing <laughs> My God! <laughs> Spent enough arbitrary time in the game before giving their opinion in a review that ultimately won't matter. Oh, is that oh, where we're going now? Ultimately, won't matter. None of it matters. Oh, it doesn't matter, guys. Okay. We, we did it. I, bingo. What do you, bingo. Why do you I got make my bingo this? card. It doesn't matter. None. Nothing matters. So I can do whatever I want. For you. <laughs> Just uh, press delete on the video if this is your the thought channel. process at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, what's the whole point of you being of a your channel work. on YouTube? Just wait, it doesn't matter. If you just say, like, um, you know, it ultimately billions from years uh, from now, no one's going to care about this review. It's like, okay. <laughs> I may have been mildly inaccurate about Tears of the Kingdom, but conversely, the sun will explode someday. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Checkmate. It's so in trolls. Yeah, it's the inevitable. So, uh, you know, in entropic heat death of the universe means that I literally don't have to <laughs> care about anything. Yeah, this ultimate cop out. It's ridiculous. Man. And will only have the power that the fan base lends it. A fan base that is, as always, just tiring. Because the fan base is f***ing exhausting. It's good this That's though, the same it? thing. You're getting some exercise. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh... Yeah, I had yeah, it knocking about fine. in a box, a Hyrule What's Warriors box happening? set for eight years. Uh, discovered it by accident, didn't even know it was part of the set because I was mesmerized by the scarf that's in it. Um, and it still still works after all, all that right. time. Uh -huh. So it's a nice little memento is, okay. of Hyrule Warriors, the best Zelda game on the Switch. Ooh. I'm going to go back to feeling oh, right. terrified off, and right. intimidated. I don't know if that pisses people off. Zelda fans, let me I'm, know. It has to piss people oh, off. Yeah. That sounded like, like a burn. A, it was the, a Dynasty Warriors The idea Warriors that playing. the Hyrule Warriors games are better than what are very well-regarded entries in the Legend oh, okay, of Zelda yeah, series. Enough. Yeah, that's got to piss people yeah. off. Intimidated by the scary, Terry Zelda fans. Whatever will I do? 
Well, maybe I'll you'll make another video it. about them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Scripted this maybe, time. maybe you'll show them how tiring and how much you don't actually care by making yet another video whining about it endlessly. Maybe. But and shouting about a review for a computer game on the internet. I called but it I a mean, computer you're, game. Or mm. shouting about people shouting at you about a computer game on the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll just keep going. The cycle continues. That's it, so, by the way. Okay, this good. Is a waste of time. That was this is so really spiteful. Was. I feel like we learn nothing, gain nothing. <laughs> I just, I'd never heard the argument before of don't make me review it further or I will lower the f score. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm okay. turning this car around. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm I turning this number down. Winnipeg. I turned this car around and there won't, <laughs> there won't be any Cape Canaveral for anybody. And then Sneeze is like a... Slapping him on the back of the head. Back, that's it. Back to Winnipeg. Did he make a single point that entire video? Or at least like, uh, anything? lots of angry. I got that. Yes. Very, uh -huh. very angry. Big mad energy. All this needs like is like a, a Skeletor rant at the end. Is like, if, you're, if you get mad at me, I'll review the next Zelda game a four out of ten. No! <laughs> Fuck you, them. internet. Anything but that, Jim. Please don't. That's just... Um, I, I found it funny. I think even it was in the same take. Like ten seconds apart. He's saying on one hand, um, fuck, what did he say? Uh, well, he, <laughs> he says, uh, the, the fan base, they're so exhausting. And then, like, says, they're so uh, the tired, Hyrule yeah. Warriors is the best Zelda on the Switch without substantiating it. And it's like, dude, you know, you're saying a provocative thing there. Why do you the think trolls. the fan base yeah. keeps, keeps coming well, at yeah. you? Oh, you don't you substantiate rules, anything, um, though. Rules for the I've yeah, noticed this. Well, it's just you pretending that you don't want to have the fight when you really, really, really like it. You clearly enjoyed it more than talking about Absolutely. the actual yeah. yeah. He just says there's no chase thing. after him over the, the Zelda video. opinion, and then he's just like, oh, you guys just won't stop, will you? <laughs> so <laughs> exhausting. Also, stop saying wacky things. Perspective on, yeah, The Legend of Zelda. I mean, come on. Don't have this opinion that, um, it, it's the, the, Jim Sterling in particular is one of these people who want to say things and not get any um, like response to it, they want to say things on the social internet media. Works. They want to say things on Twitter. They just want to put it out there, and they only want to be listened to. But mm -hmm. the moment they get any sort of you know pushback for it, they act. Oh no, all these people! Oh, I can't believe it! Oh my god! Ah, that's all these angry white men in the replies. Ah, and they do the whole song and dance. And that's what's so shocking. You would right. think you would learn how the internet works very early in your internet years, like not uh, have to I, take it to this. I think this is all deliberate. This is the equivalent of spitting out the worst hot take Twitter's ever seen and locking the thread. This is that. <laughs> this is basically the video equivalent of that. You, well, yeah, this absolutely. is the lull, all the angry gamers <laughs> in my replies. Hello, you just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also up uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.